Hello everybody, I'm Nora Burrows. I would guess that many or most of you struggle with the same thing I do, which is making so many quilts and then figuring out what to do with them. There's only so many people you can gift them to and there's only so much space in your house to utilize them. Uh, so what do you do? And obviously charity is a great choice and I've given many quilts to charity, uh, but I also have sold my quilts in the past and I wanna tell you a little bit about that. Uh, last year, I participated in a festival, it was an art festival, so I was able to charge a little bit more for the quilts than I would be for like a traditional craft fair. Uh, and I'm gonna do that again this year. The first weekend in October, I'm gonna be selling my quilts at this art festival. Uh, so I'm really spending a lot of time right now trying to make things for that festival. And what I realized last year, so last year I had you know, all of the quilts that I had made and then I'd also made quilted placemats, which I thought were really great because the placemats are really just like mini quilts. So you feel like you're making a quilt, but it's something that you can charge less for. And so more people are able to buy placemats and things like that. So last year I only had the quilts and the placemats and I decided that for this year I wanted to add other items. And initially I had all kinds of grand ideas, you know, table runners, uh, coasters, scarves. I don't wanna do any bags. I'm all, I've made too many bags and I just don't find that to be very much fun. So I'm not gonna be making any bags, but I had wanted to make all of these other smaller things to kind of accompany the quilts for this festival. But really I'm very, very behind on all that. I've made one scarf, because really I just wanna be making quilts all the time. I don't wanna be making these other things. Um, but I did make this one really cool scarf, which I'll show you, and I'm in the middle of making a second scarf, uh, kind of using it as leaders and enders while I'm making that fish quilt. So let me go ahead and show you that. And if you wanna know more about um, the experience at the festival last year, I do have a video on that. Let me see what it was called. It was called, How Much Did I Sell My Quilts For? I sold two quilts at that festival um, and then some placemats, and I tell you all about that in that video. The other way that you can sell your quilts, obviously, is online. You can have a website, uh, you can sell it on Etsy or eBay. Uh, for me, I would, in theory, like to do something like that, but the idea of setting up a website and maintaining a website and paying for the website every month um, it's just, it's really a deterrent for me. Um, and then there's Etsy, but there's a lot of fees associated with Etsy. Um, and I'm not sure that that would be the best way to sell you know, the quilts at the price point that I wanna be selling them. So I'm just going with this festival once a year and then you know, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. But let's take a look at the, the little mini projects I'm doing. Here's the scarf that I made, it's all flannel. I wanted it to be gender neutral, but it feels great. Part of why it feels so good is that instead of putting um, the front and the back right sides together and then stitching around and flipping it inside out and closing the hole, I actually put them wrong sides together and then just folded over the edge one fourth inch and hand stitched it shut which seems excessive and time consuming, um, but it went pretty fast and it really does give it um, a beautiful feel. Uh, so to me, that, that made it worth it. But this I think is a very successful piece. These flannel pieces, uh, I'll show you the other side, came, came in a charm pack uh, that I got for Christmas and I've had it for a little while I didn't know what to do with them but I think this is really kind of the perfect use and then um, these edges with the gray really the colors come came together really nicely so I have one scarf done um, to bring to the festival and then the second one I'm working on now uh, I've been using as leaders and enders this is kind of how it's gonna look um, and then I'll chop off you know the ends down here. Right now these are all sewn together in twos, so next I will match um, you know, this one here with this one, this, this set here with this set. So I'll create three long rows and then I'll sew those three rows together. I'm not completely convinced this is um, gonna be a great piece. I do love this one here so much that I feel like my standards have become high. Part of the challenge with this one was I was using so many different flannels from over such a long period of time in the sense of much of this came from yard sales and hand-me-downs and some of it isn't even really authentic 
flannel. Like I think this is just more of a woven that kind of feels flannel. And some of it is new, like this is a recent Joann's purchase. Um, but this one I think is very vintage here. I only have two pieces of that. So because, you know, the colors don't necessarily all go so well together, but in a sense I kind of like that. It just feels really super scrappy, which um, I think for this kind of piece is nice. But you know, you want it to be scrappy, but still make sense and be cohesive. So we'll see how, um, how it pans out. Here are the fabrics I'm thinking for the third scarf. So for the next one I'll do after the one that I just showed you. And I think the one I just showed you is not going to take very much time at all. I think I can knock that out in a day or two at the most. Um, so then I'll go ahead and make this one. Uh, I also have kind of these accent pieces that I could use, which I may or may not. I'm kind of thinking like big diamonds um, with the birds in the middle, uh, like a diamond in the square. So this would be the diamond and then this would be the outer part of the square. Uh, and I could do some sort of like border with either this plaid or with this floral or maybe use this floral for the backing of the scarf or something like that. But this, this is my idea for the next one. And I think it's gonna be uh, pretty lovely. The first two scarves were really uh, kind of masculine in a way and this one is much more feminine. So switch things up a bit. Let's take a look quickly at the fish quilt. I've made some progress on there that I wanna show you. Here's what I'm thinking at this point. I made these little half square triangles down here. I'm gonna do a strip of this green fabric along the bottom and then another strip at the top where the empty space is right up there just just a strip at the top and the bottom and then a layer of the half square triangles maybe even a second layer but I don't think so I think just one layer and then I'll do a blue border around the whole thing and then perhaps another border of kind of this basket weave fabric but I'm not so sure about that. For now, I'm just gonna keep making these half square triangles. I'll cut some of this fabric for a strip and attach that. I probably won't attach this to the body of the fabric. First, I'll attach my half square triangle line to this. I'll attach these two together and then that full piece I'll attach to the quilt. I've really made quite a bit of progress here. I'm very pleased with how this is coming along. I am gonna do two rows here. This was a really nice surprise that it ended up kind of looking like fish scales in my opinion. And I didn't realize that when I was gonna make the half square triangles, but I really think it does look kind of fishy, don't you think? Uh, and then I have those ones up there. So I need to make more half square triangles. The only thing that I'm a little disappointed with that I could fix, but I think I'm not going to, is um, that there's the seam here. And I do have some of these sewn together. Most of these, so this one is sewn four of them together. Some of the other ones are just sewn in twos. Um, but I have a lot of pieces sewn together. But I really dislike it when there is a seam in a quilt that doesn't need to be there. This seam doesn't need to be here. I could have made this to be a flying geese unit and I actually did try. So I started out um, with the size background piece that I thought I needed, adding on triangles. And I thought the math on that was gonna be pretty self-explanatory, but it's not. So I made a couple of those, they weren't the right size. Um, and I don't have a ton of this green left. I have plenty of the tan, but I don't of the green. So I don't wanna mess around too much with these flying geese units. Plus I was just honestly sick of it. I didn't wanna do it anymore. Um, so, I mean, I could go back and no, that's not true. I'm kind of committed because on some of these, like you see, I've already like sewn them to the other pieces. So that's the only thing. But to be honest, when you're looking at the quilt in full, my hope is um, that it just won't be very noticeable, that it'll just blend in. The other thing that I'm kind of debating about is since mathematically um, these won't end exactly where the end of this this seam, this, this, you know, you would want this kind of, this seam here to end um, like right there, like right along the edge of this body of the quilt and it's not going to. So there's, you know, two choices. I can either just make an extra one like I've done here to extend past and then trim it off and it'll be like just a teeny tiny, you know, piece down there, which is one option. The other option, which I've shown you on the other side, of the quilt here is to make a larger so that the green kind of extends 
off the quilt, um, which is a little bit my preference, but I would have to redo this piece because actually I didn't make that green extend long enough. Once I have these seam allowances gone, that'll be like another inch and that would get kind of tucked farther in. So I have to decide what I want to do about that and I still need to cut um, and sew this green strip there. But all in all, I'm really, really pleased with this. I think it's looking great. When it comes to selling my quilts, I have been asked if I ever become kind of emotionally attached to the quilts and have a difficult time letting them go. And I do become emotionally attached to them, but I don't have a hard time letting them go and I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, it's great to be able to make some money on something that I love to do. Uh, so when I'm able to receive some money for my quilts and then use that money to make more quilts, that's really satisfying. The other reason uh, that I feel good about, actually there's two reasons I feel great about selling the quilts. Number one, if somebody's willing to spend a significant money on a quilt, they really love the quilt. The likelihood that it's gonna be sitting in a closet, I think is less. So hopefully that the quilts are being used, they're being loved, they're being appreciated. Um, so I feel great about that. The other thing is I really, so this, the second reason that I feel great about selling my quilts is that they're being dispersed into the world. And, and that from a historical standpoint, I think that's really cool um, that uh, decades and centuries from now, my quilts will be all over the place and have all kinds of different stories and you know who knows what kind of comfort they will have brought to different people and what types of questions people in the future will have about the quilt or the quilt maker and things like that thank you for joining me don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next time